This is a practice paper for the Edexcel Higher Tier Paper 2 Calculator for the 2022 exams. It's based on the advanced information, so the topics in this paper will be the same as the topics in the Edexcel Paper 2 exam in 2022, in this summer. Here is the formula insert that we're being given. We may need it for some of the questions. We can always refer back to it if we want to. Okay, let's start question one. So we've got two triangles drawn on the grid and we have to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. So how do we get from triangle A to triangle B? What's happened here? So it's an enlargement. You can see a change of size. So it's an enlargement. We need to know the scale factor and the center of enlargement. So shape A was two up, shape B is four up. It's doubled, it was three across, it's now six across. So that's a scale factor of two. And the center, to find the center, we can join up points. So this bottom corner here, join with its corresponding point. We'll join the bottom right corner with its corresponding point and the top right corner with its corresponding point and they should all meet at the same place which will be down there so they're all meeting at the same place which is at 6 negative 7 so the center is at 6 negative 7 Question two, a number X is rounded to two decimal places. The result is 0 0.18. Write down the error interval for X. So it's been rounded already. The answer is 0 0.18. So the one below to two decimal places is 0 0.17. The one above is 0 0.19. So our number must have been between these two halfway points. So halfway between 0 0.17 and 0 0.18 is 0 0.175. And halfway between 0 0.18 and 0 0.19 is 0 0.185. So our number X must have been between these two. So it's bigger than or equal to 0 0.175 and it's less than 0 0.185 it can equal 0 0.175 but it's not equal it's not an or equal sign with the 0 0.185 it can be anything all the way up to 0 0.185 but not including 0 0.185 question three simplify a to the power of nine times a to the power of four when we multiply indices we add the powers so we're going to add the powers 9 and 4 make 13 so it's a to the power of 13 this means we've got 9 a's times together and 4 a's times together so in, ter in total we've got 13 a's times together part b simplify 4b squared c cubed so that means we've got 4b squared c times 4b squared c times 4b squared c so we've got 4 cubed 4 times 4 times 4 we can use the calculator if we want to 4 cubed is 64 we've got b squared times b squared times b squared that's b to the power of 6 b times b times b times b times b times b and we've got c times c times c, which is c cubed. Part c, simplify d to the power of 9 divided by d to the power of 4. When we divide indices, we subtract the powers. So 9 take away 4 is 5. Question 4. Given that a to c is 1 to 6, 
and B to C is 2 to 5, find the ratio A to B to C. Give your answer in its simplest form. So we've got A to C and B to C. They've both got a C in them. So to make these this into one ratio, we need to make those C's the same. So we've got a 6 and a 5. To make them the same, we'll multiply our first ratio, the one with a 6 in it, by 5, and the one with a 5 in it by 6. So then both the C's will be 30. So A to C, it was 1 to 6. We're going to times it by 5. So 1 times 5 is 5, and 6 fives are 30. And B to C, it was 2 to 5. We're going to times that by 6. So 2 times 6 is 12, and 5 sixes are 30. So now we've got A to C and B to C, but the C is the same. So we can make it into one ratio, A to B to C. A is 5 parts, B is 12, and C is 30. So 5 to 12 to 30. Question 5. Nick bought a new car. Each year the car depreciates in value by 12%. Work out the number of years it takes for the car to half in value. So if it goes down by 12% each year, so we start with 100%, it goes down by 12% a year, which means after each year, the car's worth 88% of what it was worth in the previous year. So let's say we're, we're starting with 100, 100%, and each year we're going to multiply it by 88% as a decimal, 0 0.88. So the question is, how many years, how many times do we have to multiply 100 by 0 0.88? So how many times, how many 0 0.88s until we get below 50%, until the answer gets below 50? So we could just try a number here. We could just try four years. So if we try four years, so 100% times 0 0.88 to the power of four. So after four years... It's going to be worth 59.96 and so on percent. So it'll be worth 59.96 and so on. So that's more than 50%. So we'll try five years. So one more year, multiply it by 0 0.88 again. 52.77%. So that's still more than 50%. So one more year. So change it to a six, one more year, and it's below 50%, 46.44. So after six years, it's dropped below half its value. So it's gonna take six years. Question six. In London, potatoes cost 45p per pound. In Dublin, potatoes cost one euro 48 per kilogram. And we're told one kilogram is 2.2 pounds and one pound is one euro 15 cents. In which city are potatoes better value for money? London or Dublin? You must show your working. So we need to make these the same so we can compare them. Let's change Dublin. So we've got one euro 48 cents per kilogram. And one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So it's actually 148, one euro 48 for 2.2 pounds. We can change this to one pound by dividing by 2.2. So 2.2 pounds costs 1 euro 48. If we divide by 2.2, we'll find out what 1 pound costs. So 1.48 divided by 2.2 
is 37 over 55 or 0 0.67, 67 cents. So 67 cents per pound. So now they're both per pound. We just need to make them in the same currency. So we need to change from euros to pounds. So to go from pounds to euros, we multiply by 1.15. 1 times 1.15 is 1.15. To go from euros back to pounds, we divide by 1.15. So we are going to go from euros to pounds, so we're dividing. So divide our answer by 1.15. And that's to two decimal places, because it's money, 58p, so 0 0.58. So 58p per pound. So that's in Dublin. In London, it's 45p per pound. So it's cheaper in London. So London is cheaper. So 45p is less than 58p. Question seven. The diagram shows a patio in the shape of a rectangle. So we've got 3.6 meters by 1.6 meters. Jack wants to cover the patio with paving slabs. Each paving slab is a square of size 40 centimeters. The paving slabs cost seven pounds 59 each. Jack has 300 pounds. Does he have enough money? So we need to know how many paving slabs are going to fit in this area. So it's a square of side 40 centimetres. And the measurements of the patio are in metres. So let's change them. So if we times by 100, 360 centimetres by 160 centimetres. So how many of these fit in? So the, the paving slab is 40 by 40. So how many go up? How many 40s go into 160? That's going to be 4. We could have used a calculator. But 4. 16 over 4 is, is 4. And how many go across? So 360 over 40, 36 over four is nine. So nine paving slabs across. So how many paving slabs? Four up, nine across. So four rows of nine. So four nines are 36. So 36 paving slabs. They're seven pounds fifty nine each. So thirty six times seven pounds fifty nine is two hundred and seventy three pounds twenty four. So that's the cost of the paving slabs. Jack has three hundred pounds. So does he have enough money? Yes, 300 is bigger than 273 pounds 24. Question eight, use your calculator to work out the square root of 1080 degrees plus one over 1080 degrees minus one. Write down all the figures on your display. So we're going to press the square root button, then the fraction button, and then it's 1080 degrees. So 10 and the 80 goes inside the bracket. The angle goes inside the bracket, and then plus 1 on the outside. And again, 1080 inside the bracket and minus 1 outside. So almost exactly how it looks, but instead of the degree symbol, we've got a bracket. So press equals, and we've got 
I just check that. So 1.1950514661466. And then part B, write your answer to correct to three significant figures. So one, two, three. It is five or above. So it rounds up. So 1.19 rounded up. 1.20. So that's how it looks in the calculator. Question nine. Lucy is three times as old as Alex. Lucy is seven years older than Megan. The sum of their ages is 126. Find the ratio of Alex's age to Lucy's age to Megan's age. So let's find these ages. We can write some equations. So Lucy is three times as old as Alex. So... Lucy is three times as old. So Lucy is three Alex's. Lucy's age is three times Alex's age. Lucy is seven years older than Megan. So Lucy is seven years older than Megan. So Megan's age plus seven. And the sum of their ages is 126. So that's Lucy, Alex, and Megan. All their ages equal 126. So we can well, write an equation just in terms of L. So A, if I divide both sides of the first one by 3, is L divided by 3. And M, if I take 7 away from both sides will be L take away 7. So I've got L plus A, which is L over 3, plus M, which is L minus 7, equals 126. So I've just got L's left. I've got rid of the A and the M. So now I can solve this. So I've got, well, I can collect these like terms. So L and L and a third of an L I can add together. So one plus one plus one third is seven thirds. So I've got seven thirds L minus seven is 126. If I plus seven to both sides, 126 plus seven will be 133. Now I need to get L by itself, so I can, well, I can either times by 3 and then divide by 7 or divide by 7 thirds in one go. It doesn't matter which way round I do that. So 133 times 3, I'll do it in two steps. So 399, so that's multiplying both sides by 3. I then divide both sides by 7. So we get 57. So L is 57. So that's Lucy's age. So Lucy's 57. That's. So now I can work out Alex's age. So that's Lucy divided by 3. 57 over 3, which is 19. And Megan's age which is 57, take away 7, which is 50. So we want the ratio of Alex to Lucy to Megan. So Alex is 19 to 57 to 50. So 19 to 57 to 50. Alex, Lucy, Megan. Question 10. Find the equation of the line parallel to 2x plus 5y equals 10, which passes through 0, negative 3. 
So the equation of a straight line can be written in the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. Parallel lines have got the same gradient. So the gradient of this line, 2x plus 5y equals 10, will be the same as the gradient of the line in the answer. We can find the gradient of this by making y the subject. So let's take 2x away from both sides. So I could write 10 minus 2x, but I'm actually going to write them the other way around. So it's in the form y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to write minus 2x plus 10. Now I'm going to divide by 5. And I'm going to divide each term by 5 individually. So 5y over 5 is 5. Negative 2 over 5, I'm just going to write as negative 2 fifths. And 10 over 5 is 2. So the equation of this line is y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Its gradient is negative 2 fifths. So that's going to be the gradient for our answer. And the y-intercept, well, that was given to us up here. So it goes through 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3 is going to be where it crosses the y-axis. So negative 3 is going to be the y-intercept. So uh, the line has the equation y equals minus 2 fifths x minus 3. A gradient of minus 2 fifths, the same as the parallel line. Parallel lines have got the same gradient and the y-intercept of negative 3. Question 11. Carlos wants to find an estimate for the number of ants in a colony. He catches 60 ants from the colony and marks each one with dye. He then returns the ants to the colony. A week later, Carlos catches another 60 ants. Eight of these ants are marked with the dye. Work out an estimate for the number of ants in the colony. So this is our capture recapture question. And it's an equivalent fractions question. So it can be written as an equivalent fractions question. So 60 out of all the ants out of the total were marked with the die. And that's equivalent to a week later, he caught 60 and 8 were marked with die. So 8 out of 60. So these are equivalent fractions. So for these two fractions to be worth the same, what does x have to be? So we can say whatever we multiply the top by, we'll multiply the bottom by the same thing. So what do we have to multiply 8 by to get 60? Well, if we do 60 over 8, and we'll do that in the calculator, that's 15 over 2 or 7.5. So we need to times by... 15 over 2 or 7.5 so times the top by 7.5 or times the bottom by 7.5 as well so that's 450 so we estimate there are 450 ants in the colony carlos assumes that none of the marks had rubbed off. If Carlos's assumption is wrong, explain what effect this would have on your answer to part A. So if some of the dye had rubbed off, then a week later, this number sh should have been bigger. So some of these 60 ants he caught were actually would have been marked with dye, but the dye would have rubbed off. So say this number was much bigger then we would have multiplied, if it was 30, we would be multiplying by 2 and we'd only be estimating there were 120 ants. So if any of the dies rubbed off, this answer would be an overestimate. It would be too high. 
So if the assumption is wrong, what effect would this have on your answer? So the answer would be too high, an overestimate. Question 12. The table shows some information about times in minutes it took some boys to complete a puzzle. And we need to draw a box plot. So for a box plot, we need the lowest time, which we've got, the highest time, which we've got. We need the lower quartile, which we haven't been given, but we've been given the median, the upper quartile, and we've been given the interquartile range. So we can find the lower quartile because it'll be the upper quartile take away the interquartile range. So 23 take away 8, 23 take away 8, which will be 15. So we can use our calculator to check. So the lower quartile is at 15. So draw a box plot. So we want a line for the minimum, a line at 12. So it's going to be each two little boxes is going to be a one. So that's 11, 12. So a line at 12, the lower quartile is at 15. A line at 15, median at 18. So that's 19, 18. Upper quartile is at 23, so 24, 23. And the maximum is at 29, so two back, two little boxes back from 30. We draw a box around the quartiles, the lower quartile, upper, median and upper quartile. And we draw lines out to the lowest and the highest. So there's our box plot. Some girls also completed the puzzle and we've got a box plot to show the distribution of times the girls took to complete the puzzle. We need to compare their distributions. So to compare the distributions, we compare the average, so the median. So the girls median is 14. The boys median was 18. So we can say on average, so the girl's medium, the girl's median is lower. So on average, they completed the puzzle in less time. And then we compare the spread. So either the interquartile range or the range. So let's look at the interquartile range. So it was eight for the boys and for the girls, it's from 11 to 17. So it's six. So it's six, the interquartile range for the girls. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the boys interquartile range is bigger. So the boys interquartile range is bigger. And that means their times were more spread out. Their times were more spread out. Question 13. It takes 30 builders 12 days to complete a job. Work out how many days it would take 40 builders to complete the same job. So 30 builders take 12 days. So if we do 30 times 12, so 30 times 12, 
which is 360. That means that's 360 days of work. So we need 360 days of work. How many days does it take 40 builders? So 360 divided by 40, which will be nine. So it should take nine days. 40 builders can do 360 days of work in nine days. Write down any assumption you made. So we're assuming that every builder works at the same rate. So they're all equally fast at working. So all the builders work at the same rate. Question 14. Given that f of x equals 2x minus 4 and g of x equals 3x plus 5, find g of f of 3. So this means we're putting 3 into f and then we're putting that answer into g. So 3 into f and then that answer into g. So let's put 3 into f first. So we can say f of 3 is two threes take away four six take away four is two so f of three is two now we put that into g so it's g of two so three times x plus five three twos plus five six plus five that's eleven part b Work out an expression for the inverse of f. So the inverse of f. That means the opposite of f. So the opposite function. So f of x is 2x minus 4. So what's the opposite of 2x minus 4? So we can switch this around. I'm going to change f of x to a y, so y equals 2x minus 4. And then I'm going to rearrange it. Actually, what I'll do first, I'm going to switch x and y around. So x becomes y and y becomes x. That's what happens in an inverse function. The inputs become the outputs and the outputs become the inputs. It's a bit like the... Um, the number machines so 2x minus 4 means you times by 2 you put x in you times it by 2 and then you take away 4 and you get your output so the input and the output so times by 2 take away 4 the inverse function is doing the opposite so it's going to be plus 4 and then divide by 2 I'll carry on doing it the way I was doing it. So I've switched X and Y around, and then I'm going to rearrange it to make Y the subject. So I'm going to plus 4 to both sides. So 2Y equals X plus 4. Then to get Y by itself, divide by 2. So X plus 4 over 2 equals Y. So this is our inverse function, X plus 4 over 2. So the original, we times by 2, then took away 4. The opposite of that is add 4 and divide by 2. x plus 4 over 2. Part C, solve f of x equals g of x. So f of x was 2x minus 4. And g of x, 3x plus 5. So solve, so let's get rid of the smallest x first. So take 2x away from both sides. 3x take away 2x is 1x. And then to get x by itself, take 5 away from both sides. 
x is negative 9. Question 15. The diagram shows a solid shape. The shape is a hemisphere, so half a sphere, on top of a cylinder. And we've got our formulas here. So volume of a sphere. So we're going to need to half this for a hemisphere. And we've got pressure is force over area. So the solid shape is placed on a table. The solid exerts a force of four newtons on the table. The pressure on the table is 100 newtons per meter squared. And the height of the cylinder is 45 centimeters. So we've got... We've been given the force of 4 and the pressure is 100. So we're going to use pressure is force over area. That will give us the area of the base. And then we can use that to find the volume of the cylinder. And we can find the radius, which will give us what we need to find the volume of half a sphere. So first step, let's find this area. Pressure is force over area. And we have been given the pressure of 100 newtons per meter squared. So this area we get out is going to be in meters squared. And the force is 4. So if we multiply both sides by A, 100A is 4. Divide both sides by 100. So the area, what well, is 4 over 100, or 125th of a meter squared. So that's the area of the base. Area is pi r squared. So we can find the radius of the, of the circle. So the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Pi r squared equals 1 25th. So we can use a calculator here. So we've got 1 25th as our area. We need to get r by itself. So we're going to divide by pi. And then that's r squared. So r squared is 0 0.0127 and so on. So to get r by itself, we square root. And that's 0 0.1128 and so on. 0 0.1128 and so on. But that is in meters, remember. So that's the radius is in meters and this height is in centimeters. So we're going to change this to centimeters. So that's times by 100 to change it to centimeters. So 11.28 and so on centimeters. So now we can work out our volumes. So the volume of a cylinder is going to be the area of the base times the height. So the volume. So we're not using the, um, the one in meters squared. That's no good to us. So we're going to work it out again. So it's going to be pi r squared for the base times the height. So pi times 11.28 squared times the height, which is 45. So that's for our volume of a cylinder. I'm going to save 11.28 to the calculator. So that's store and then one of these letters, A. So stored as A, 11.28. So pi times 11.28 squared times 45. So I'll use A. So that's 18,000. And that is in 
uh, centimeters cubed. For the sphere, we've got half a sphere. So instead of four over three, we're halving it. So instead of four thirds, we're going to use two thirds. So for half a sphere, two thirds pi r cubed. So two thirds pi times the radius cubed. So that's two thirds times pi times we store it as a cubed so we've got three thousand and nine centimeters cubed so the total volume add these two together so we've got twenty one thousand and nine 0 0.0111 um, we can give our answer to the nearest whole number or three significant figures so 21,000 will be okay I'll put three significant figures question 16 the diagram shows a rectangle all measurements are in centimeters. So we've got a rectangle drawn here with a length of 2x plus 7 and a width of x plus 3. We're told the area of the rectangle is less than 45 centimeters squared. And we need to show that 2x squared plus 13x minus 24 is less than 0. So the area of the rectangle is less than 45. We can write that as an inequality so the area of the rectangle is length times width so 2x plus 7 times x plus 3 the length times the width is less than 45. now if we expand the brackets and get everything over to one side we should be left with 2x squared plus 13x minus 24 is less than zero so let's give it a go Expanding the bracket, so 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times 3 is 6x, 7 times x is 7x, and 7 times 3 is 21. Collecting the like terms, so the like terms that we've got on the left side are 6x and 7x. We can add them together to give us the 13x that we wanted, so 2x squared plus 13x plus 21 is less than 45. And then all we've got to do is take 45 away from both sides and we have what we wanted, what we had to show. Part B says find the range of possible values of x. So what can x be? We can start by solving this inequality so it's a quadratic so we can use the quadratic formula and we've got the formula given to us on our formula page so we'll, we could use a is 2 b is 13 c is negative 24 or we could also factorize this and to do that i would do a times c 2 times negative 24 is negative 48 and I'm going to write down what multiplies to make 48 I want something that multiplies to give me negative 48 and adds to give a positive 13 so 148 2 24s 3 16s and that will give me my 13 also 4 12s and 6 8s but I want the 3 and 16. So I can rewrite my quadratic. Instead of 13x, I can have 
16 take away 3. So 2x squared plus 16x take away 3x minus 24 is bigger, is less than, sorry, is less than 0. So now I've uncollected the like terms. I'm going to put it into brackets. I'm going to factorize it. So my first term will be what I can take out of the first two terms. So they've both got a 2. 2 and 16 are both in the 2 times table. And they've both got an x. So 2x. 2x times what makes 2x squared? That's x. 2x times something is 16x. That's plus 8. And then something times x is negative 3x. That's negative 3. And negative 3 times positive 8 is a negative 24. So let's find what makes it equal to 0. What would x be for it to be equal to 0? So either the first bracket is 0. 2x minus 3 is 0. So plus 3 and divide by 2. x would be 3 over 2. Or what makes the second bracket 0? Negative 8. And if we use the quadratic formula, if we'd used a, b, c and substituted them in, we would have got the same two answers. So what does this mean? If we do a quick sketch of a quadratic, so we've got a quadratic graph, it's crossing the x-axis uh, at these two points, at negative 8 and 3 over 2. That's what makes it equal to 0. The graph is equal to 0 at negative 8 and 3 over 2. We want to know where it's less than 0. So it's equal to 0 here. It's above 0, above the x-axis. It's less than 0 underneath the x-axis. So it's this part of the graph. What x values are they? Well, it's between negative 8 and 3 over 2, or 1.5. So anything in between, any x value in between negative 8 and 1.5. So any x value bigger than negative 8, but less than 1.5 or 3 over 2, will be less than 0. That isn't the final answer. You've got to be very careful um, with this I'm actually re-recording this part of the video because I made this mistake. So the area of the rectangle has to be less than 45 centimetres squared. But also, we can't have a negative length. So we can't have any x value less than negative 3. Because negative 3 plus 3 would be 0. So any x value we have has to be bigger than negative 3. It's got to be bigger than 0. So we can say x also has to be, x also has to be bigger than negative 3. So what makes both of these work? So it's going to have to be not in between negative 8 and 1.5. It's going to be, have to be in between negative 3 and 1.5. So x is bigger than negative 3 and less than 1.5. Those are the values of x that if we substituted them in here, we'll get an area less than 45 centimetres squared. Question 17. Sketch the graph of y equals 2 sine x for 0 to 360. So it's a sine graph. So it's like y equals sine x, but it's been multiplied by 2. So it's going to be twice as high. So the sine graph usually goes between 1 and negative 1. So the graph of 2 sine x is going to go between 2 and negative 2. It's going to be double the height. All our answers, all our sine x's will be doubled, twice as high. 
So then we just have to draw the sine graph. So sine starts at zero, and it's the wave that looks like that. So it starts at zero. It's usually at 91, but this time it will be at 92. 180, zero. 270 would normally be negative one. It will be negative two. And then 360, zero again. So we're going to join these points up like a wave. So that's our graph of y equals sine 2x. Question 18. The graph of y equals f of x is shown below. The coordinates of the maximum point of the curve, so the top point up here, are negative 2, 1. Write down the coordinates of the turning point, so the same, this point here, of the curve with equation, y equals f of x plus 3. So when the change is outside the bracket, we're changing the y. So it's going up by 3. We're adding 3 onto the y coordinates. So negative 2, 1. Add 3 onto the y coordinates. 1 plus 3 is 4. y equals minus f of x plus 2. So we've got one change outside the brackets, that's this minus, that's going to make the positive y coordinate negative, it's going to multiply it by negative 1. So 1 times minus 1 is minus 1, so the y coordinate would be negative 1. The change inside the bracket changes the x, and it does the opposite to what it says, so x plus 2 Inside the bracket, we'll take 2 away from the x-coordinates. So negative 2, take away 2, will be negative 4. So it's going to be negative 4, negative 1. Question 19. So we've got C, D and E are points on a circle centre O. We've got a circle drawn for us. This is going to be a circle theorem question. A, E, B is a tangent. To the circle E again that's shown on the diagram. CD and DE are equal. That's shown on the diagram by these lines. So we've got this isosceles triangle in our circle. Angle AEC is called X. AEC, this angle here is called X. We need to find the size of OED. OED. That's this one here, in terms of x, and give reasons for each stage of our working. Whenever we have a triangle in a circle and a tangent, we can use the alternate segment theorem. So the angle that this chord makes with the tangent is the same as the angle that comes from this chord which is this angle over here. So C, D, E is X because of the alternate segment theorem. So I'm going to give reasons for my answers for each stage of it. So C, D, E is X because of the alternate segment theorem. We can use the isosceles triangle to say what these two angles at the base are. So angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 180 take away the other angle, take away X will tell us what these two green ones add up to. And because they're the same, they must both be 180 minus x over 2. So CED, this green one here, CED, is 180 minus x over 2. And again, we're going to give a reason 
and that's because angles at the base of an isosceles triangle angles at the base of an isosceles triangle are equal we can also use um, the tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees so this is a right angle tangent meets radius at 90 degrees so we know that CEO so I'll draw this one in yellow won't come up very clearly CEO is going to be 90 take away X so CEO is going to be 90 take away X so this whole angle AEO is 90 this part of it is X so the other part of it must be 90 take away X so now we have everything we need to find our angle OED so we're going to do the green angle take away the yellow angle so 180 minus X over 2 take away 90 minus X so OED O E D is 180 minus X over 2 take away 90 minus X now we need to be careful taking away 90 minus X we're taking away all of it taking away the whole thing which is why I'm leaving it in brackets here so simplifying this we've got 180 minus X all over 2 180 over 2 is 90 and x over 2 is either, well, x over 2 or half of an x. I'll put half x. Now, expanding this bracket, we're taking away 90 and taking away negative x. We can think of this as having a negative 1 here and expanding the bracket. So, negative 1 times 90 is negative 90. And negative 1 times negative x a negative times a negative is a positive and 1 times X is just X so we've got 90 take away 90 that's nothing that's gone and we've got minus negative half X plus 1 X and that's just half of an X question 20 so here we've got two triangles they're not right angle triangles, so we're not using Pythagoras and Sokotoa. We're using the sine rule and the cosine rule this time. Work out the value of X. So whenever we have this with two triangles joined together, we're probably using the triangle without the X in it first to find the combined, the, the, um, the shared length. And then once we've worked out the shared length, will be able to find X so there's not enough information in this triangle on the left to find X at the moment but if we knew the shared length we could use the cosine rule to find the angle and we use the cosine rule to find an angle when we know all three lengths so how can we work out this shared side we can use the sine rule now the sine rule is for opposites so we've got 71 opposite 9 and we don't actually have the angle opposite our y at the moment we don't have this angle but we can work it out because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees so if we do 180 
take away the two angles we've got, so take away 71 and take away 53, we get 56. So 180 take away 71 take away 53 is 56. So this is 56 degrees. And now we've got opposites, we can use the sine rule. So the sine rule is in the formula sheet we've been given. We are going to use it with the lengths on top. When we're working out a length, put the lengths on top. When we're working out an angle, put the angles on top. It makes the rearranging easier. So we're working at a length. So we're going to have y over sine of its opposite, sine 56, is equal to the other length, 9, over sine its opposite is 71. So to get y by itself, at the moment it's divided by sine 56. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. So let's multiply both sides by sine 56. And then that will give us our answer. So 9 over sine 56, 71 times sine 56 is 7.8. Nine. So 7.89. That's this shared length here. Now we can use the cosine rule to find our missing angle. So we want the cosine rule to find an angle that's not given to us in our formula sheet, we're given the cosine rule to find a length in the form a squared equals. So what we can do, we can rearrange that. We can rearrange that version of the cosine rule. To find an angle by plussing this term 2bc cos a to both sides add 2bc a to both sides so we've got a squared plus 2bc cos a equals b squared plus c squared then take away a squared from both sides and then divide both sides by 2bc So you could remember this as well. This is the cosine rule to find an angle. So it's big A is our angle. This is our big A. Our little a is opposite and the other two are B and C. So we have cos x is b squared plus c squared, b and c are 10 and 13, either way around, minus our a squared, that was our last answer, over 2 times b times c. So let's type this in the calculator, that will be cos x, then we'll just need to shift cos for our angle. So I'm using the answer button from my previous answer. So I've got 0 0.795. So I'm saying cos x is 0 0.795. So to get x by itself, we do the opposite of cos, which is our shift cos. So shift cos our answer, so we get 37.3 to one decimal place.
and that's degrees. That's x degrees, so 37.3 would be okay. Question 21. 50 people were asked which fruits they like from apples, bananas and oranges. This is a Venn diagram question. So 11 people like all three fruits. Um, that's going to go in the middle of our Venn diagram. Let's draw a Venn diagram. So we've got three circles. Move that one over. So three circles, one for apples, one's for bananas, and one's for oranges. And I'll draw a box around them. So we have apples, bananas, and oranges. Okay, 11 people like all three fruits. That goes in the middle of our Venn diagram. 33 people like apples. That means this whole apple circle is 33. We can't do anything with that right now. We'll come back to it. Six like apples and bananas. Apples and bananas, but not oranges. So that's this part here. In the apple circle, banana circle, but not the orange circle. 15 like bananas and oranges. So the overlap between the B and the O is 15. We've already got 11 there. So we've got four more. Five of the people do not like any. Do not like any. That goes on the outside. All 25 people who like oranges like at least one other fruit. So no one just likes oranges. That's a zero. So we've got 11 and 4, 15. All 25. So the whole circle is 25. There must be 10 more. Then going back to the apples one, 33 like apples. We've got 10, 11 and 6 so far. Which is 27. So there must be 6 in this bit. And we've got one missing bit. There are 50 people in total. So the whole apples was 33. We've got another 4 and another 5. So 33 and 4 and 5 is 42. There are 50 in total. So 50 take away 42 is 8. So there's our Venn diagram completed. Two of the 50 people are chosen at random. Work out the probability they both like bananas. So what's the probability that someone likes bananas? So... 6 plus 11 plus 4 plus 8, 29 um, people like bananas. So 29 out of 50 like bananas. So the probability of picking someone that likes bananas is 29 out of 50. If we're choosing two people, we're going to pick one person. The probability the first person likes bananas is 29 out of 50. For the second person, there's 28 people left that like bananas out of 49 people in total. So it's 29 out of 50 times 28 over 49. So 29 over 50. For the first pick, 28 out of 49, like bananas for the second pick. So I've got 58 over 175 as my answer.